Hi everyone, I uh, just thought I'd do a, a quick demonstration video of my uh, spot welder. It's very very easy, I've just literally um, welded up a load of packs, uh, well a load of parallel packs anyway. Um, here's one, and I've got uh, several more over here that have been done. Uh, that one's just got a tab on there so it's easier to solder to. And these ones are still to do, as well as this one. So let's just um, demonstrate actually doing a strip um, of this. It's very easy. All I'm doing is sending down a strip. Just bend it a little bit so it's bring you towards it. Get it lined up nicely. Firstly, I'm just going to do a quick one here. Just as that's all lined up nicely. So I've got my button wired up to the solenoid and if I just give it a quick, I'm just holding some pressure on this bit, bit here with my right hand and I'll just do a quick one with my left. Okay, and that's one and another. So then I'll just go on to the next. And the next. Okay, and spin that around. Do the other one. Now I've got this down quite well, really. Um, I know how long to hold it down for. It's literally just a down and up almost, and it gets pretty good welds. And I'm just spinning that over just to do the other side. Okay, and it's exactly the same. I'm just going to go to this one here because. It's easier to do it sort of in the middle rather than at the end. And just do that one. Do that spark there. Okay. Keep throwing the button down. I mean, this might be easier on a foot pedal, but to be honest, unless I put a timer in place, which I have actually got a timer, um, I've got a timing board that I was going to put in place. I don't know where I've put it now. Somewhere around here. Oh, here we go. So I bought... Let's just take that off there. I bought this timing board here. Um... I'll put a link, it's, I think it's from eBay, I'll put a link to it in the description. But basically you can set it to, you can turn it on and it will turn off after a certain period of time. And you can set it to uh, fraction of fractions of a second up to hours. Uh, you just have to change these jumpers slightly, or if, if you want it for a longer period of time. Um, so I might put that in line and then that will give me, you know, wholly consistent... Uh, welds but to be honest by hand I'm getting it quite good um, I'm quite consistent anyway so I'll, I'm probably not gonna bother and I'm happy doing it this way I'm fine there's no problem at all and those welds are pretty good and there you have it there's one of my parallel packs uh, for this tennis 4p pack that I'm doing welded up and uh, yeah, it's very easy. I mean, I've showed you the design before, but um, we've got some 16 mil squared cable here going into a, a chocolate box, we call them, basically an electrical connector. There's some two, um, I think it's two and a half mil um, copper core wire. We, it, we In England, it's called Twin and Earth. Uh, it's actually solid copper rod. Um, but yeah, twin and earth will do you. Two and two point one mil twin and earth. This is just a bog standard automotive switch, a momentary push switch. Uh, normally, it would be connected up so that when you press it, there'll be a light. But obviously, I don't need that. This is just intercepting the power going to this solenoid here. Okay, so the solenoid takes its power from the plus of the battery and the minus of the battery 
you've got one wire coming out of the minus here, or the negative. It goes to the switch, all the way along here. The switch then, would, you know, you press the switch down. That then connects up the, <clears throat> excuse me, the negative and gives the negative to the solenoid. Whereas the solenoid is constantly connected to the positive. So all you're doing with the switch is breaking the, the negative uh, feed to the, this solenoid itself. And the solenoid is just a, a regular um, ATV or scooter or um, most motorbike um, starter solenoid, a starter relay solenoid. Uh, this one's particularly rated for 150 amps. This battery gives out 200 amps. Um, and so far I've done heck of a lot of welds with this solenoid and I've had no problems whatsoever. This piece here is just a um, copper bridge coming from the positive to this side of the solenoid switch. And I've got some, um, <clears throat> some crimped connectors here going to this 16mm cable and they just get screwed into this connector here and the little copper rods just get screwed in this side. It's very, very simple. You should have both of these copper rods in contact with your nickel when you're um, cl flicking your switch, <clears throat> and that will give you the best weld and the least amount of sparks. But ultimately, any battery that gives out at least 200 amps uh, of current will work. If it's less than that, you'll probably end up with poor welds. They'll probably be cold welds. But you could go up. You could go up to like 800 amps, 850 amps. That would be a little bit overkill. So between 200 and 600 is the range that I would go for. Any higher than that, with this method, um, you may end up melting through your nickel. Although saying that, if you had your timer in place, you'd probably be fine. You could go right up to 800, 850, like um, a heavy goods vehicle battery or something like that. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the demonstration. And uh, for more videos on electric skateboards and all things battery related, um, give us a like and subscribe to the channel.